Yeah. Uh, well, we might divide it. We might not. In the news? In the news. In the news. So, in the news. Um, for those of you who are joining us on this new video, um, welcome. If this is still one long video, welcome. And thank you for staying with us. We'll figure out how we're going to do the editing afterwards. All right. So, that's, on, your, that's, your, that's, your, that's, your, that's your wheelhouse. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to talk about Apple. So, um, Apple is coming out with iOS 14, which yes. iOS 14 is being touted as one of the biggest privacy updates for the Apple platform. Yes. So what Apple 14 once is out was doing is it has one a feature that tells you if an app is using your camera and with an icon. Awesome. Which is great. Yeah. Uh, additionally, it's providing users to have the ability to turn off apps from accessing their unique device identifier. Why so, is that important? This is important because apps like Facebook yep. uh, uses these identifiers to build a marketing profile of its users. For example, you download the Facebook app. It's looking at the data and schematics of your phone. It's looking at the unique identifier. It's attaching that to your account. And that's a key uh, data point, which is then used for marketing. Now, apparently, according to Facebook. I like that. I, I like that too. I like that. According to Facebook. Um, doing this, if people go ahead with this, it could impact their uh, revenue by 50% for audience network revenue. Oh, well. Because it, it removes that data point for Facebook to then market to you. Oh, well. I it's, it's I own it. I can set the rules. And if you don't like the rules, then don't use it. Yeah. If you want your app to access my photo library, I'm going to say no. If you want your app to access my camera, I'm going to say no. And just your app is, does, is a barrier. You cannot access that. That's right. Although some apps now are, require, are, are, are saying, hey, if you want to use this function, we need to do it. Otherwise, we lock your app out from you. Oh, well, so yeah. it's, it's, interesting, it's an interesting... Um, it's always a cat and mouse game. on the Always a cat and mouse game. So, But I mean, the reality is here. Apple's trying to do their best to provide us privacy. It's my platform, i.e. Apple's platform. Um, so if you don't like it, Facebook, oh, well. Those are the rules. Yeah. However... There's more to And of course, just stories. before you go on, Facebook obviously is is mad at this because they're the data mine of kings, right? That's how they make their... I yeah. just about said a really bad word. That's how they make their money. Right? Yes. That's how they make their money. So good on Apple for doing what it is they're doing. So that's a win for Apple. Woo! Okay. So Facebook, uh, given what's happened in the last six months, Facebook has released a new or did release a new feature that allows businesses and influencers and other people to host virtual events that you can charge money okay. for. Yep, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, that how makes sense. However, how much do they take? Apple mm -hmm. has this policy in the App Store. Any money, any revenue, it's being generated by an app that comes from the App Store or from the App Store. Right. Apple takes a 30% straight cut from all revenue. And 30% is a lot of percent. Okay, I, I don't yep. agree with that. So here's what's happening. So this story. Uh, this new feature that Facebook's rolling out right. um, didn't like it. And what Facebook was about to do is put a notification in their app informing users of the Apple products who use the Facebook app for Apple. They were going to put a notification saying, hey, you know what? Apple is taking 30% of all revenue. And according to Facebook, Apple blocked this update with this pop-up because they cited their irrelevant information to users policy in their app store policy. They determined, you know what? This information is irrelevant for users to know how much money we, we okay, take so, off the top. So let me get this right. So app A mm -hmm. has an app on in the app store. App A is free to download in the Apple store, but within the app of, of app A, there is in purchase things. So I can buy something in there, in yeah. that app or whatever. So what Apple has said is that anything that is purchased within the app that is on the app store, Apple is going to take 30%. Precisely. See, I don't agree now, with that. People aren't arguing. If there's an app on the app store and it costs 50 bucks, right. people aren't really arguing. Sure, Apple takes 30%. People aren't really arguing that. But for example, if you're, if you're a newspaper and you have an app, and people have downloaded the app for free, but in the newspaper app, there is a subscription. Right. Well, Apple takes 30% of that. Yeah. If there's, so, a, if there's an in-game item. Right. 
30%. Twitch, for example, Twitch. If you subscribe to someone on Twitch, the you pay 30% more on the Apple app in the app uh, of Twitch on the iPhone than you do on the web browser. Yeah, see, I don't agree with that. What Apple could do, however, is to say, okay, App A, uh, if somebody wants to download that app off of the App Store, it's going to cost them $50 and I'm going to take 30% of that or whatever it is. And if you want to keep that app on the App Store, then every month you need to pay me a rental fee. Right? To hold that space, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's that's another way Apple could deal with it, right? Cuz obviously Apple's looking at App A that is making millions of dollars off of their app and going, "Well, hold on a second here. You're using my platform to get it out there, so shouldn't I get a cut of the pie? Mm -hmm. So what I say is that you shouldn't, Apple, it makes no sense to me, I agree with this, Apple should not be taking a percentage of the in-app in -app purchases, but if you're an app that has in-app purchases, then in order for you to stay on the App Store, you also have to pay me, i.e. Apple, a rental fee to keep your app there. And I will decide what that what that rental fee is going to be, and you will pay you will pay it. If not, you're out of the store. Could it be a sliding scale where if you have a million downloads, it's a higher rental fee? It can be whatever it is. Hmm. I mean, when you when you think of rental fees, I mean, again, I'm thinking about it as property. I'm right? looking at the smaller creators, right? I've... Yeah, I mean, but I, I I I just look at it from a from a rental standpoint, right? So the I think I I think of the iTunes like store. Yeah. That that's okay. that that something like that, right? You like run a it, business. You sell all your business. Here's a flat fee you rent. Right. Basically. That's what it that'll mm -hmm. be. And Apple can decide what that. And they could have a sliding scale saying that you know if you're if you're if your yearly earnings are this amount, this is going to be your lease fee. Mm -hmm. If it's this amount, it's this lease. If it's amount. What do you think? Potentially, uh, I'm thinking about pretty that. smart for a that's boomer, good. eh? That's good. Pretty smart for a boomer. I, and a lot of people are, are are going after Apple because it is becoming a monopoly yes. of marketplace. That's I see. That is one thing I I don't like about. I I love Apple, as you know, but I think these behemoths, Apple, Amazon, Google, Google the three. You know, you know, I I I do believe that they're monopolizing and pushing yes. smaller people out. So it's not just Facebook. Uh, Epic, which is the creator of Fortnite, is also Ooh. in a battle against Apple, and they've actually made a little commercial about it. Didn't Apple just kick Fortnite out? We'll talk about that. Okay. Here we go. Let's watch this commercial using Fortnite characters. Today, we celebrate the anniversary of the Platform Unification Directive. Platform Unification Directive. Now, those of you who, who notice this is familiar, it's because it's a parody of Apple's famous classic commercial. And all the characters are Fortnite yeah. characters. The giant And notice how they changed it so it didn't look the same as yeah. the Apple because they would have been sued. Right? Epic Games defied Apple's store monopoly. In retaliation, Apple's blocking Fortnite from a billion devices. Join the fight in 2020 to stop. Okay, so. Let's get into the details on this one. Here we go. Apple has terminated Epic's developer account on the App Store. Apple promoting uh, Fortnite's competitor. How did all this come about? Well, basically, same thing with Facebook. So Fortnite, uh, which, which is made by Epic, mm -hmm. Epic did not like the 30% cut. So Ep Fortnite's free. Mm -hmm. Free game to download. However, Fortnite has in-game purchases right. that you can purchase within the game. Right. On the Apple platform, Apple takes 30% of the cut of everyone's in purchase in the game. Right. I don't agree with that. Now, here's the story about this. Now, Epic is not innocent because apparently, according to rumors and whatnot, that Epic... Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, according to apparently emails, uh, the CEO of Epic emailed Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, going asking for an exemption. Here's the thing. Although there is this 30% cut... Some apps from Apple have been given exemptions to this. And people are like, why is this fair? It's in the policy. It's blatant in the policy for everyone. Why is it some do and don't? So can anyways, I answer? go ahead. It's my company. I can say do what I want. Fair enough. Fair enough. If you don't like it, you don't like it. If I decide that company A doesn't have to pay it and company B does, that's my choice. You may not like it. If you don't like it, don't use my service. Yeah, fair enough. So, yeah. Uh, 
so Epic again, they're trying they're trying to get around the the um, um, the fee, and they didn't they didn't get their way. So now they're trying to mobilize their users against Apple. So I mean, Epic isn't entirely ethical in their approach here, but they're the they're the only company so far that's really Facebook happened after this that's really questioning the percentage and basically battling Apple in regards to this fee on the App Store. And again, interesting Epic's using the term monopoly. And I think they're not entirely wrong on there because platforms well, like Well, I mean, it's they're they're feeding off of the Senate things that just happened, yeah. right? So where I do I do agree that the big players, the big vendors right now have too much power and are pushing out smaller people. Fortnite isn't small though. Um, no, Epic... But, Epic this making makes tons of money. Right. They, just want, they so, just want more money. So I, I I think the answer here is to use the renter or the lease concept that I have, right? Saying to to Fortnite, yeah, you want to stay on my my, yeah, people have to pay for it, but now you're going to lease your space on Apple, and I will choose the amount that lease is going to be based upon whatever I decide I'm going to base it upon. And if you don't like it, then find another another platform. But the reality is largest platform in the world, right? For mobile devices. For personal in use, yes. Yeah. Uh, Android's right. bigger, but right. it's more for, for corporate. Yeah. So things. and so a lot of people who want to play Fortnite. Yeah. Why? Because iPhones rule. Apple's not entirely good. What kind of a what kind of a phone do you have? I have an iPhone. This is a Mac. However, all this is recorded on a PC. Uh, so yeah, whatever, I mean, whatever. So I mean definitely things to think about. Um we're seeing this battle against 3%. And again, yeah, it's your platform, it's your storefront, but you're one of the only ones. And there are monopoly laws. And it's a matter of should those apply to online yeah, stores? But Apple's comeback will be, you know, how much money we put into making the Apple Store what it is and how it works and, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? There was time, there was effort. Yeah, It's they, not so much the store. I think it's more about, you know, if they could open up the iPhone platform and Google platform to allow other stores for example uh in the pc game world there is steam there's epic there's uh, there's blizzard there's uh, good old games there's tons there's tons uh, of storefronts that you can purchase digital things from mm -hmm. on the pc platform because mm -hmm. pc's open and you can purchase from any storefront mm -hmm. it's a matter of i own the storefront i own the device that connects the storefront and i'm restricting that device for only accessing my storefront you can't go shopping at google you can't go shopping at steam you can't go shopping good old games you are forced to use my store i mean there are people who are jailbreaking their iphones so that yeah. they can do that kind of stuff as well we but know, apple we, is trying to prevent that right. we cat and mouse game right yes so i mean we would never recommend anybody um you know break their phone right we we would never do that but the if I own it, these are my rules. Do I think Apple should be taking thirty percent out of in-app purchases? No, that's ridiculous, right? But I think it is reasonable for them to say, you know, if you want to put it on my store, this is how much it's going to cost you. Should the device? If you want to keep it on the store, you're going to lease that piece of property. In order to open a competition, should device makers allow? other store competitors to be allowed on the platform? Here's the problem. The problem with that is that Apple is such a, such a sandboxed environment from a security standpoint. The fear is if they do that, then they lose that ability, which I think they, ha they have a reasonable argument there. Could right? you leave it to the user to make that informed decision themselves? Going, hey, this is our store. This is why we use our store. It's the most secure platform. But if you want to shop for cheaper, you can open it up and allow other stores to come in. Yeah, I don't know. In, in order to drive competition, because in a capitalist society, competition is what runs everything, right? right. So you need competition. That's why there's anti-monopoly laws. Right. But yeah, they... it's it's you know I I do think that these big conglomerate, these big vendors, you know the Googles, the Apples, Microsofts, you know all of those big ones of the world, Amazon, Facebook. I think um, I think they need to be broken up uh, because they are they are monopolizing mm -hmm. and pushing out smaller players. I mean, our good friends with the Boomerang app is mm. a really good example, right? Where once On the again, Google platform. On the Google platform, right? Right. So it's, it, I mean, I do think it. we need to revisit that. And the problem is, is that 
these devices now, they're, they're being designed in such a way as that it doesn't allow the user to have options. Yeah, you can jailbreak this phone to give you other options if that's what you want. Uh, and that's a choice you make, I guess. And, you know, if you have an Apple device and you want to be able to download from the Google Store, well, then jailbreak your phone and do that. But once you jailbreak it, you lose some functions, right? And protections that you have with your iPhone. Having said that, I remember you used to be able to partition an Apple so you could run a Windows products, right? Remember? You uh, still can. Mac, Mac. Yeah, Mac. Yeah, Mac, but not, not mobile. Not, right. not them. So why couldn't they do the same thing? They could do the same thing. They don't, well, sorry, in terms of users, um, because Apple doesn't want that. Right. I mean, right. but they, they wanted it on the PC level, right? Yeah, on the on PC the level, they want because it, it was beneficial for them because in the workplace environment, Everybody's Windows is still a predominant business yeah. use platform. Yeah. So they needed to bend to the market's will yeah. and allow Windows on a Mac yeah. in a yeah. way. Yeah. And, and there's apps that allow, that are marketed by Apple, that allow you to run Windows apps within the Mac OS. Yeah. So I mean, like, uh, there's no doubt that Apple is definitely monopolizing. I mean, and they're a for-profit company, and that's in their best interest for their shareholders. They get it. But at what... Uh, at With what, no taxes. Yeah. At <laughs> what detriment to us as the end user, right? Anyways. Maybe good discussion. Actually, maybe they actually pay their taxes, perhaps. Good discussions. Uh, okay, next news story. Oh, uh, we're going to talk about another one? Why not? Okay. Because we're probably going to split this video up anyway. All right. <laughs> um, this one. A uh, news report from some researchers determining that a quarter of Alexa top 10,000 websites are using browser fingerprinting scripts. So a couple of things on this one. First off, it's not the Alexa you use on your phone. Like, hey, Alexa. Yeah. It's the original OG Alexa, which was, it's still an Amazon product that ranks websites. Like, why, what is this, are the, why is this an issue? It's an issue because although you use private browsing, although you use a VPN, Mm -hmm. doesn't mean you're anonymous from websites. And there's a ton, according to some researchers, a ton of different scripts websites can run that looks at all the unique functions of your device in order to identify you as a unique user. Mm -hmm. Good example, uh, permissions fingerprinting, uh, looking at, you know, what kind of apps, geolocation or camera. For example, if I want to determine who you are, who I am, Let's say your device allows your camera to be accessed by your web browser. Right. Let's say I don't. Right. You connect to my website. Mm -hmm. I see that information. Mm -hmm. I now know who you are. I now know who I am. Simply because your device is set up in such a unique custom way mm -hmm. that's unique to you. It narrows you down. Fingerprinting. Uh, peripheral fingerprinting. This is interesting. Peripheral. So basically, um, like what, what kind of devices do you have plugged into your device? that's being accessed by your browser. If you have a webcam, if you have a printer, a, a, printer, a webcam, yeah. So again, you have unique little behavioral things in your device that makes you unique. Uh, timing, for example, you know, um, looking at the history of, of how long you spend on places. A good example, uh, another report talking about this is confirmed. Browser histories can be used to track users. We know that, but it's not so much what's being saved. It's about your behavior. If I know, because well, humans are, are creatures of habit, right? We are. If, if I know that every morning you visit a certain news website for five minutes on average, well, I can then divide all my users who come to my website for the only ones who on average visit me five minutes at a time. Right. Right? So, and then using your uh, location, using your, maybe your battery life, mm -hmm. some apps can see that using what cameras you have on can make you super identified. So how do you defend against this? It's hard. Um, obviously using a VPN can hide your location. Using private browsing will restrict most fingerprinting scripts. Is that like going incognito? Incognito or private yeah. browsing if yeah. you're using Chrome. Right. Um, it will prevent most scripts from running. But at the same time, it may prevent some websites from running efficiently. Are there some apps that are available that you can put on oh, your phone yes. to help prevent this? From phone, happening? not so much. Because mm -hmm. phone platforms like uh, Safari don't allow 
third-party add-ons. Right, but what about PCs? And PCs, yeah. There's the centralized. There, I have uh, what's it called? I have an app that allows me to change my browser ID oh. and rotates every five minutes. I know, right? But for the average user who's not a security-conscious person like we are, I mean, if you visit, don't a ask him why he's doing that. But <laughs> if you visit a website five minutes on average. There's some websites keep track of that. Right. It can make you identify. Even though you use a VPN, use private browsing, a website can still see someone's visited the website for five minutes. Who could that possibly be? Let's look at all the users who spend an average of five minutes on my site. Maybe mm -hmm. there's a thousand, maybe there's five. Mm -hmm. okay. But it may not be able, it may be able to divide, uh, identify you as an identity, but not necessarily by name. Correct? It, depending on who their partners are. Okay. For example, if they partner with Facebook and all that stuff. Okay. Nothing new. It's more so looking at the new ways that these scripts are being used by apparently the top 10,000 websites on the internet who are using these scripts in order to identify users who are potentially trying to subvert tracking. They're using behavioral tracking to determine who you are. And that's how they create a digital dossier on you as well. Yeah. Right? Like that's that's how YouTube knows what videos you like. That's how TikTok knows what videos you yep. like. That's how, you know, that's how Netflix knows what you like and then gives you recommendations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Good example. The other day I was browsing through TikTok and uh, I saw a video uh, that was posted a couple hours ago when this happened, and it was apparently there was a film crew down at our Victoria uh, uh, downtown filming some Hallmark, Hallmark videos for Christmas. Yeah. I was like, yeah. oh, behind the scenes. But I was like, oh, that's happening right now? And I looked online, and it was happening right there now. There you go. But it knew my location from all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like it or not, right? That That's what happens with these devices. So. Yeah. Wow. All right. Quite a show. That's the That's the show. Let's get ready to rumble! Yeah. It was a good show. It was a good show. A lot good show. Of, let us know in the comments down below what you think about these topics we talked about. Um, because we mean, it's it's all debated. Yeah. Many of these things I are I kind of like debated. going back and forth. I like sometimes playing the controversy, you know, contra, whatever it is. Devil's I, Advocate? Yeah, that's it. I need coffee. I haven't had a coffee yet. Oh. And, it's, and it's already almost like one o'clock. Oh, no. Right? Our time. I cool. know. Big video. I know. Right? So, anyways, on behalf of myself, I'm Darren. And Brandon, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we'll see you again next week here in the studio from the White Hatter and our new show. See ya. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.